In this video, I'll be explaining to you what a transversal is, and we'll be looking at the angles that a transversal forms. Now, if none of that makes sense to you, that's okay. It will in a few moments. So first of all, a transversal is a line that intersects two or more coplanar lines at two different points. So let's say I have two lines here, and they can be parallel, but they don't have to be. So as long as I have two lines that are in the same plane, the transversal, let's make it red, is a line that passes through or intersects both of those lines. So for now, we can call that line T, and let's call the other lines M and N. Doesn't really matter. All right, so the transversal, again, is the line that goes through two or more. So these are our coplanar lines here. It goes through two or more of those lines. Now the thing about the transversal, what makes it special, is that it forms some important angles. And our angles can be seen here and here. So it forms actually eight angles. And we'll be talking about these eight angles right now. Okay, so just to make sure you understand, we're looking at a different pair of coplanar lines. So I have L and M, they're coplanar. They could also be parallel, but they don't have to be, and they're not in this case. All right, so because this red line here is going through those two lines, it is called a transversal. When that happens, we have now eight angles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And these angles have different names. So we're going to go over what the, the names of these angles are. Um, so in between those two coplanar lines, so on the inside of these lines, we have these angles on the inside of those lines. Those lines are appropriately named interior angles. So what are our interior angles here? Well, our interior angles in between line L and R are angle 3, angle 4, angle 5, and angle 6. All right, so in the same way, you probably can guess what our exterior angles are. So the exterior angles are the angles that are formed on the outside of those coplanar lines, so the ones out here and out here. So our exterior angles are, let's get this down, our exterior angles are angle 1, angle 2, angle 7, and angle 8. All right, so now that we know what interior angles are and what exterior angles are, we can work with those words to be more specific. So for example, I have, we have here also consecutive interior angles. So as long as we know their interior angles, we know we're choosing from the interior angles list. But what does it mean to be consecutive? Well, consecutive interior angles are angles that lie on the same side of the transversal. So the transversal is here. The interior angles are here. Or consecutive interior angles have to lie on the same side as each other. So 3 and 5, for example, they lie on the left of the transversal. So they are consecutive interior angles. So angle 3 and angle 5 are consecutive to each other. But they're not the only consecutive interior angles. So if you go on the other side of the transversal, even um, in the interior but on the other side, we have angle 4 and angle 6. So those are our two pairs of consecutive interior angles. All right, so we have more stuff here, just a few more. So we have also alternate interior angles. So again, let me write this down. Alternate interior. So again, as long as it's interior, we know that it has to be from this list of interior angles. But what does it mean to be alternate? 
while alternate interior angles are non-adjacent interior angles that lie on opposite sides of the transversal. So there's a lot going on here. So what does that mean? So we know that they have to be on opposite sides of the transversal. So this is the left side of the transversal. This is the right side of the transversal. So it has to be on opposite sides. It also has to be non-adjacent. So it can't be three and four because those are adjacent. So it has to be on opposite sides and non-adjacent. So three and six are called alternate interior angles for that reason. So angle three and angle six. All right, but that's not the only interior angles that are opposite and non-adjacent, aka alternate, alternate interior. So the other alternate interior pair are four and five. So let's write that down here. Angle four and five are also alternate interior angles. All right, so we're running out of space here. So we'll do the last two on the next page. Okay, so the next term is alternate exterior angles. And hopefully you remember what exterior angles are. So here we go, I have a little problem here with my pen. Okay, so hopefully you remember that the exterior angles are the ones outside of line L and R, so R1 and 2, and R7 and 8 are exterior angles. And we just spoke about what it meant to be alternate angles. So they're non-adjacent and they're on opposite sides of our transversal. So even though 1 and 2 are on opposite sides of the transversal, it doesn't work because they're adjacent. So we have to go with 1 and then on the right side all the way down to 8. So angle 1 and 8 are alternate exterior angles. And again, there's not just one pair, there's another pair here. And the other pair is angle 2, because again, that is exterior. And on the opposite side, but not adjacent, we have angle 7. And, and the final relationship that I want to go over today is corresponding angles. All right. So with corresponding angles, they lie on the same side of the transversal. So let's say we're looking at the right side of the transversal for now. So when we look at the right side of the transversal, we can pick the angles at the top they correspond with each other. So angles 2 and 6 are, are corresponding angles because they are both at the top of their respective lines. So are, well, angles 4 and 8 are corresponding because they're both at the bottom of their respective lines. They're on the same side of their respective lines. So angle 4 and 8 are also corresponding. And I was just focused on the right side of our transversal. There are more corresponding angles over here on the left side of the transversal. So what are they? Well, one of them is angle 1 and 5 because they're both on top. And we have on the bottom angle 3 and angle 7. So all of those pairs are corresponding angles. In another video, we'll be looking at what the transversal does to when it cuts parallel lines, what the measures of those angles will be. So stay tuned.